Hi folks, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. My name is Jake. This is a Wee Wednesday video. I almost said video. <laughs> We've got a slip joint from Tucson. This has got uh, titanium handle scales, uh, solid carbon fiber inserts, S90V crucible blade, stainless steel of course, and a very unique uh, little lanyard option thing. Very comfortable to fit the fingers. You can get a solid grip. I've been carrying this thing for a few weeks now, generally as a necklace neck knife, which I tend to do. I like having a functional kind of man jewelry, if you will. Um, this knife comes with different inserts as well, although the only ones that I can find on sale right now are the carbon fiber ones. If you're interested in little knives or just really cool, good knives, even if they're small. And if you don't mind slip joints, of which this is one, then stick around. The full review's coming to you right now. My guess is that one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to know is about the size of this knife. So uh, let's put a ruler on the screen. I'll put metric side up because most of my audience is metric. And there you go, it's with the uh, dangle here, it's right around seven and a half centimeters long. And then with the blade, you know, it's under 13 centimeters. And what is that in inches? You're looking at about five inches total when it's open. And the handle itself is about three inches. Uh, some people just don't do that well with, you know, using actual numbers. So here's a couple of AA batteries. That'll give you a little bit of a reference. I lined it up just at the end of the handle right there. So two and a half AA batteries maybe. The blade, you know, just a little over one battery. So how do I carry it? Well, my main way of carrying it, as I mentioned in the intro, is on a chain around my neck. So here's one of my chains and here's the little clasp, clasp for it. It's just one of those uh, you got a little lever there to pull open and open it up and you see that little swivel here and it's got a hole in it. it slides on there and it hangs and it hangs generally under my shirt I don't wear these to show off especially these this is a little this is at the biggest end of the spectrum for what I will carry around my neck generally what I carry is a bit smaller than this but this is totally functional and it's easy to take on and off when you want to go to use it and uh, it works quite well now let's start the beginning. Who is the designer of this knife? Well, this is made by, and I'm going to say it poorly, excuse my uh, Chinese, Hu Yu Dong. And I probably said that wrong, wrong, incorrectly. Uh, this is a Tucson knife. This is the TS-188. We've got a satin finish on this S90V steel. S90V has a Rockwell hardness, according to Crucible, uh, Crucible is the manufacturer of S90V. From 56 to 59, that's the best target range according to the manufacturer of the steel. I have not tested this knife. I do not know what the hardness is, but I suspect it's around 58, 59. We've got a hole in the blade that's got that odd shape. And that's what we use to uh, control it. When it's closed, you grab there with either both fingers and pull. You can push your thumb in there and pull as well. The thing is, there is a con about this knife and about most of Tucson slip joints that I've had in my hand so far, and that is that this back spring that they've put in this system is very strong. I think it is much stronger than it needs to be, uh, but, you know, there it is. It is what it is. It's too strong. It has a very solid half stop, and that's a good safety feature. But a few times, you know, I've been holding it like this, and I go to close it, and it gets up to the half stop, but it nips into my side of my finger right there because I didn't have my fingers back here. So if you've got your hands in that front choil and you go to start to close it, you're asking to get your fingers nipped, so you got to hold it back here. Once you do that, it's easy and straightforward to control, but I believe that that spring is too strong. The sharpness choil here is beautiful, and i got to go get my doggy bandit. 
So that should be the end of the barking in the background. Uh, Bandit, for those of you who are wondering, is a very good, cool, nice dog, and he's doing very well. Uh, so the blade here, the blade shape, you've got a fairly thick stock blade. It stays most of the thickness until you get around this hole, then it starts tapering down. It's called, I don't know, drop point uh, sheep's foot kind of mix, because we've got you know movement here, and there's a belly here. So it's a cross between a sheep foot and drop point, probably more like a sheep's foot. Full flat grind, and you see the satin finish on the grind right there. It's a little bit dirty right now, and so it looks kind of cloudy. And that's because I used it quite a bit to do a lot of work, as I do with all the knives that I review. And uh, it picked up a bunch of residue uh, glue from cardboard and from uh, packing tape. And uh, I think i got to get some more of that... Uh, alcohol to clean it off, clean it off a bit more. But I'm doing the review now, so it's got a fairly good, nice satin finish on there. A very good edge sharpening that they did on this knife. Fairly consistent across there and very close to 20 degrees on both sides. Uh, now for the handle, this is TC4 titanium alloy. You've got this kind of rope kind of pattern across the back on both sides. And that kind of gives a little bit extra texture for grippiness, which is really nice. And it's got that interesting look to it. We've got that inset of the solid carbon fiber on both sides. And as I said, there's some other materials. So I'll show you a couple, at least one picture of a blue insert. You've got very fine milling all over the place. Let's see if we can get a good close up of this, if it'll show up. If this doesn't show up, I'll have to take still pictures, but if you look along this section right here, you can see lines. If I go on this angle, they're going straight up and down right now. So they've milled in just a tiny bit extra texture in there for a little bit extra grip, which is yeah, a good thing. You can see it on that side a little bit too. So I like that. As you can see, it's got standard screwdrivers, uh, also called flat but uh, the technical term for those is standard. It was the first standard for screws. So there you go, makes complete sense. The fitment with the carbon fiber is very good, very nice sizes. You can see a little bit of spaces when I use my uh, microscope to take the picture. From the naked eye, it's got a very, very good fit. And then at the back here, this has been uh, riveted on or pressed in, so you can't take this off unless you want to take it off permanently. Uh, you could drill it out, I guess. And then you'd be left with a little space with a hole in it that you could use to tie stuff on. But right now you've got this swivel with that little hole through it that just works very, very well for hanging on things. The fit and finish across the back there is beautiful. You can see the color difference between the titanium on the outsides and the steel down the middle for that spring. And then the different steel healer here for the blade. No blade plays side to side. Uh, I'm assuming it's got phosphor bronze washers. I'm not taking this guy apart. No way. And uh, here's a big thing, Canadians, if you're buying this knife and the vendor says, hey, I'll take the knives apart for you to get them into Canada, say no, 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 if it's a slip joint. Slip joints are totally legal. There's no problem getting them into Canada, as far as I know, and I've gotten a number of them into Canada. Uh, they're not targeting slip joints at all, because slip joints are supposedly not scary. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not evil. They're not used as weapons, just like almost any... The most common weapon for a knife is a kitchen knife, but the politicians don't seem to be very aware of that. And neither do CBSA agents. They think flippers are super dangerous. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I wouldn't, especially a small mini knife like this, a slip joint, make sure it stays together. Because especially with the really strong spring in here, this knife would be very tricky to put back together. It's very simple and straightforward. It's just challenging because of the pressures involved and the tensions in there. So, yeah, don't let them do that. Now, if you want to sharpen this knife and you need a flat spot to, camp, flat spot to clamp onto, you can pull it up about three quarters of the way here, and then you could clamp on that flat section right there. Uh, that's what I clamped onto uh, to measure the grind angle on here. 
Or you could use a sharpening system that lets it sit flat on the main bevel because this is a full flat grind and you could sit it on the bevel. Now let's get my little measuring tape in here into the picture. And as long as this is in the picture, I'm talking about the specs. The weight of this knife is 46 grams, 1.6 ounces, so nice and light. Uh, the factory sharpness, 135 bess, very, very good. Uh, the cutting edge length is 5.16 centimeters, 2.03 inches. Blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 2.58 centimeters, 2.08 inches. So ever so slightly longer, but still two inch blade is what we got basically. The thickness of the blade here is 3.43 millimeters, which is 135 thousandths of an inch. That's just over a quarter, uh, sorry, just over an eighth of an inch thick right there. And uh, now for the blade depth, that's this measurement here. 1.62 centimeters, that's 0.64 of an inch. How thick is it right behind the grind? So the thickness of the steel right at the cutting edge, and they usually measure it about an inch up, so that's really at the halfway point. 0.35 millimeters, that's 14 thousandths of an inch right there. The grind angle, very, very good. 19.6 degrees, 19.9 degrees. So they've done a very good job sharpening this knife and uh, matching the angles on either side very closely. Now for the handle, the handle length, and I measured it with the this thing folded up, so the shortest possible length that you can measure it. 7.66 centimeters, 3.01 inches. So three inches, two inches, three, three to two, very good proportions. The grip area in here, uh, it's a rough estimate. Uh, 6.35 centimeters, two and a half inches, basically, because you lose a little bit on the front and tiny bit at the end there. The thickness of this handle, 1.07 centimeters, that's 0.42 of an inch. So that's a very good thickness for the size of the knife. Knife, the de handle depth, it's largest right here, 1.89 centimeters, 0.744, so basically three quarters of an inch. And when the knife is closed, the depth of the knife, the biggest spot is right there just before it drops down for the tip. 2.22 centimeters, that's 0.873 of an inch. And the total length of the knife when it's open is 12.9 centimeters, uh, 5.08 inches. So yeah, five inch knife, two inch blade, three inch handle, just over one and a half ounces. It feels really good in hand. And as long as you hold it back here, it's very safe. When you go to close it, you go halfway, you get your hand totally out of the way and close it. You can just hear it when it goes to close. The, it pulls, takes over, you know, at about 30 degrees and just slams its way down. So if you've got a finger in the way, it's gonna hurt. It really will. It's not going to feel good. And when it's open, it's not going to close on you. It, you'd have to hit this thing very hard. You probably have to knock it out of your hand before it's going to close on your finger. It might go up to the halfway point and nip the side of your finger, but it's not going to close all the way. It's just... Technically, it could, yes, but in all practicality, in all my life experience, I can't find understand a single way that this knife is going to close all the way in any usage scenario. It... This is a high-end small user knife. High quality steel, titanium, solid carbon fiber, good look, feels good, works good. The grip on it's just great uh, as a package opener, as a delicate user. Uh, you know, this kind of grip on here, you can hang it on a necklace. This is a very nice knife. Uh, maybe I would prefer a stone wash. Maybe, who knows? Well, yeah, I generally like stone wash. But this satin grind looks really nice. Uh, this is a very nice secondary knife to carry or as man jewelry, if you will, or women jewelry or uh, in a purse. It'd be a very good touch for a woman in her purse. Uh, you know, get used to you know, opening and closing it before you have to open it in use somewhere. Uh, it does take a bit of strength and focus to get it just right. But once you've done that, you know, it's a very safe thing. It's got a cool look to it. Uh, good knife. There's no cons on here except for that the spring is too strong, in my opinion. So if you're looking for a knife like this, I bought mine at eBay 
and I bought it through an auction on eBay for 48 pounds. It is listed at White Mountain Knives for $79.99 US, but it's not in stock. Uh, you can uh, go to his webpage. I've got a link down below for this. Click on the notify me button. Uh, but I would also email him at whitemountainknives at gmail.com and ask him if he's going to be ordering these or not. Uh, you know, just if you want one. Uh, AliExpress has this listed for uh, 83 pounds, uh, 83 US dollars, I should say. So there's some auctions for this. I'll put some links down below. If this is on auction on eBay, you know, just make sure you pay, pay less than 80 US dollars and uh, you're getting a good deal. If you pay more than 80 US dollars, you're throwing your money away. You might as well, you know, just go to the Buy Me store or AliExpress and just, you know, buy it outright. I'm not taking it apart. I'm not going to take these handle scales off. I don't want to scratch the sides of the uh, carbon fiber or anything. Uh, there won't be anything in there to look at. So you can see in there that it's just, you know, flat in there. There's no reason to take these screws out. Uh, you can just drip, you know, open it halfway, drip a little bit of a lubricant in there, and this knife is going to be good to go. Easy to clean, easy to carry and use, and it is actually a very useful functional knife. And if you want to become a Patreon supporter, just click on patreon.com slash cce, and you can become a supporter of this channel. I would appreciate that very much. Every little bit of support really helps me out. Um, I do buy all my knives. They're, well, not all, almost all my knives. I do get some, a very small minority, sent to me at no cost. Uh, but most of them, I either pay full retail or I buy them, you know, a bit under retail at White Mountain Knives. The owner gives me a deal or from other manufacturers. So there you go. Another beautiful knife by Tucson. Thanks for watching my video. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Remember, guys, always. Cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye now.